You can't hear me. Now you can hear me. Cool. Nothing quite like making sure your microphone is not working when you start. Yes. Thank you, Chris. Audio. Anyways. How is everyone doing? I am exhausted. I just spent this whole past year traveling around the sun again. Just... Just absolutely exhausted. Yeah. Anyways. It's been a fun, relaxing birthday. I still worked all day today like normal. So, I uh, didn't get a chance uh, to tell any customers, like, hey, don't yell at me. It's my birthday. Because... Nobody cares. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever called or talked to a customer service like anyone, anything, anywhere. And they're like, yeah, you should be nice to me. It's my birthday. I'm like, I'm a customer. I don't care. Hey, now you can see it even worse now. Well, the hell. You know what? I'll tell you what. I got a better idea. <gasps> Poof, it disappeared. I'm a magician. Well, you know, it runs in the family anyway, so whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, so still had to deal with customers today. Luckily, they weren't too bad. Uh, Ill-advised to bring that up. Bring ill advice to bring. Oh, yeah, when talking to customers, yeah, no one cares. Uh, everyone was pretty pretty easy to deal with. There was one guy that uh, proceeded to tell me how the company works, and I'm like, dude, you don't work, you don't work for us. Like this is one of those things, and I'll dive more into this. I do want to talk about like how to interact with customer service a little bit better, um, but. That's one of those things that I wish we could do. Like, my guy, I work for this company. You don't. That should be the end all be all, but no. Uh, like, I don't know of a single customer service place that, uh, like, that allows you, that they're okay with you telling people that. Because it could, it could be a little rude, a little catty, and I understand you're there to represent a company, an organization, so you can't say that, but... <laughs> he was the CEO and he undercover bossed your ass. You know, here's the thing. I have no idea who our CEO is. Don't know. Probably not going to find out because it, it really doesn't matter to me. So, anyway, so, uh, that being said, I highly, highly doubt he was the CEO. So, uh, other than that, though, people are, people are generally pleasant. I like... My job, my position, uh, I do work, for, uh, again, I work for a cable company. I, I work the retention department, so I do have, it's people that are calling me to cancel their service. And generally, like, you would think that that's, like, a lot of, like, grouchy people who are complaining about service all the time. It's a cable company. Everyone complains about their cable company. I work for a cable company, and I've complained about my cable company before. It happens. Um... But no, generally most of the calls are pretty good. I think it's mostly people have in their head that when they get to my department, they understand that my department is the one that can help them, that can satisfy their needs, basically. Uh, whether it's I am able to put them on a new promotion and lower their bill, or uh, I'm able to disconnect the service and they can just like F off to another company. Whatever. Uh, I can get that done for them, so therefore they're usually a little more receptive. But, yeah. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, for the happy birthday. Yeah, uh, so a couple of changes on here real quick as I get this started. Uh, first of all, I found out the last two streams that I've been doing apparently have only been broadcast in 720. Uh, this broadcast I fixed and is in 1080, and it looks good. It is using a lot more of my CPU than, <laughs> than it was before, but... I feel like the picture and everything looks a lot clearer, so I love that. Uh, it's one of the things I don't like about doing our shows in um, StreamYard. 
because StreamYard, StreamYard, you, uh, I believe you get like, if you don't pay for it, it only broadcasts like in uh, maybe 480. I can't remember if you don't pay for anything through StreamYard. I think it only does 480 or it may broadcast in 720. I do pay uh, every month for it to be in 720 and not to have like StreamYard's logos on it. So whenever you're watching us on Tagline or Marquee like last night, that was all through StreamYard. Um, th this is being broadcast through like OBS if you're familiar with the streaming software and I'm able to broadcast pretty much it's straight from my camera out to you so you're getting like good clear camera quality out of this so yeah I'm hoping it looks better because that's one of the things that always eats at me is not having good good quality of, of my picture graphics and stuff I feel like my graphics are getting a little bit better, so I'm happy for that. Um, uh, I don't think I've asked you this before, but how long have you been in that business? Um, with this company, so I've worked for this company over three years now. I have worked for other uh, like cell phone cable companies before. So I would say in in long run, in some form or fashion, in different departments, I have worked in a communications department for, or a communications company for about 15 years or so. It's generally what, like when I tell customers, when customers are like, do you know what you're talking about? Like, well, yes, I've worked for these kinds of companies for about 15 years. I also did satellite communications for the military, which has nothing to do with customer service for a cable company, but it sounds cool. I mean, still involves satellites and communications, so it sounds like I should be qualified to know what I'm talking about. Um, but I don't need to be, I, I don't bring that up on every call because I don't need to be like dunking on customers like that, so. Uh, let me see. Hey, can you add in what I gave you during tagline to 200 gold? Does that count? Oh, so thank you for bringing that up, Garth. Yes, I figured out how to do this thing. Uh, the donation goal. Uh, I figured out how to add that and yeah. Um, how to add, uh, the amount that you put in a tagline. I don't know that yet. I know there's a place to adjust that. I just haven't figured out exactly those details yet. So I did get that fixed uh, today and got all those placed. It's on, it's on all the different screens. Uh, some of y'all may notice in the chat, some of y'all already have wrenches. Um, like my brother and Garth and uh, Vernon also, if he pops up in here, uh, both Vernon and um, a fan's view, depending on which YouTube he wants to access from both of those have wrenches as well and i will probably hand out more wrenches as this goes uh i was mainly concerned with it right now just because i advertise this stream as like an a a m a a <laughs> instead of ask me anything ask me almost anything i mean obviously i'm not gonna tell you i haven't like publicly said which cable company i work for um i'm not gonna say that because <laughs> they're not paying me to do that they can pay me to do that that would be great um and I'm also not going to give people my uh, social security number. So it's not necessarily an ask me anything. It's just ask me anything you want within reason. And just knowing that there's some of those, I'm like, no, I'm not answering that. Um, the, uh, the, the social security number, I don't know if y'all heard about this. Uh, you can change the amount in the goal when you said, yeah, I, I figured it's somewhere in there. I just haven't like pinpointed exactly where. <laughs> um, I was in a hurry trying to figure all that out earlier. Um, the social security number, I don't know if y'all heard about this, but th I think this was like years ago. There's that company LifeLock that essentially you pay them and they monitor your social security number credit just to make sure no one's stealing your identity or whatever. And they were advertising how good their services are. And the CEO of the company did a commercial, at, like a commercial on TV for all the public to see where he's like, I believe in our service so much that I'm going to broadcast my actual social security number. And he put it up on the screen and his identity got stolen by like multiple people. And it was hilarious because the life lock didn't stop people from taking his ID. <laughs> like if you're going to put like your full name and your social security number 
to the public, it's going to get stolen. So, yeah. That being said, I'm not going to uh, broadcast my social security number. So. Oh, yeah, he even put his social security number on the side of a bus. Yeah, what an idiot. <laughs> like, you will hear me as I do these uh, streams. Thank you, nerd. Happy birthday to me. Yes, thank you, nerd. Got the zombie hand. I didn't want to do the walking zombie thing because I feel like it's what everyone has. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay. Huh, that's cool. I didn't know how this actually works. Typically, uh, as far as like how like the donations and everything goes like with Streamlabs, uh, for Cinefanatics, my brother handles that. I have no idea how it works. Uh, now, this is the one that I'm specifically handling. So... Yeah, that was kind of cool how that, uh, like, I got a notification on my watch about that, too. So that was, that was awesome. So not only is the stream alerting me, but so is uh, my watch. Do I have... Okay. I'm going to make sure everything's up on that. Yeah, so I will talk more and more about stupidity as these go on. Um, I'm not gonna, like, really harp on it too much tonight, except for probably making a passing joke, but, yeah, uh, just as a light thing, uh, people who follow me know that I deal with a lot of depression, and most of it comes from stupidity, so I will dive more into that later. Um, that's not gonna be this stream. This stream is more for, like, fun, like, ask, ask me almost anything, I'll play, I'll turn on the Nintendo here in a minute, I'm thinking of trying to see... Uh, what could potentially be a good, um, oh, what's it called? I put it in the tweet. Where you just quickly run through the game and see how fast you can beat it. Speed run. So, I'm thinking of doing one of those pretty soon. Yeah, uh, I was trying to figure out how to do that, Garth. Uh, I spent probably a good couple of hours today trying to figure out why Streamlabs won't let me change that address. It has to be Robert Adams 2. I could not change it to the Robert Adams MLP. And that was annoying the ever-living fuck out of me. So, yeah, anyways. Yeah, uh, apparently, I don't know how exactly, but the most I could read like through googling it is like i set up my youtube channel here and then whatever the youtube channel's name is is what the stream labs gets named but i could have sworn like well i don't know because i don't actually have a name for this youtube channel so other than it just being robert uh that's probably why if like if the name said robert adams kind of like here i don't know y'all gonna see this on a delay here, I just put in the chat, like, the word name. Notice how next to it it says Robert Adams. If that said Robert Adams MLP, then the the Streamlabs address, I think, would be Robert Adams MLP. But because my YouTube channel is just named Robert Adams, apparently I'm not the first Robert Adams. I'm the second Robert Adams. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, this was kind of a disaster. <laughs> Uh, the other night I went to go see uh, Pearl, uh, which was pretty decent. Pearl was good. I liked X better, but Pearl Pearl looked better. Pearl had a better look to it. Uh, I don't know how. I, I know nerd. I know nerd seen Pearl already, uh, and I think he, if I remember correctly from what I've read, I think he agrees with me that uh, we liked X X a little bit more than Pearl. Pearl looked good. I like movies that are, like, overly saturated. I do like a good, heavy saturation of colors in general. Um, like, this whole thing over here with the uh, the rainbow prism thing coming out. Uh, like, I like just the bright colors of that. Uh, your brother and you went... No, I went to see Pearl. I saw Pearl by myself. Pearl is great, but it also, like, X... But yeah, uh... So, I say it's pretty decent, meaning, like, it, it was good. Like, I will enjoy going back and watching X and then watching Pearl again. 
kind of like uh, what we were talking about on Marquee last night. If you don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to go check out Cinefanatics, the Marquee last night. Uh, the the conversation that my brother and I were having that time, I did mention my brother uh, of watching Infinity War and then watching Endgame. I feel like I will have that connection with X and Pearl. I will watch X probably first and then follow it up by watching Pearl. I so I will. I will watch Pearl again. It was good. Uh, I say pretty decent, like in the terms of how movie quality is. Or, uh, you know what? I'll even go a step further. I'll say it's pretty decent in terms of horror movie quality this year. Because we've had some really good horror movies. Uh, Barbarian, easily, easily shot to like the top of my list. Uh, Black Phone was pretty good. <laughs> X and Pearl, so they're naming them after Marvel Comics characters. I mean, sort of. And then, of course, uh, they announced that there's going to be a third one, which is uh, Maxine, with, like, three X's in it, uh, which is also Mia Goth's character in X. So she played, in X, she played Maxine, and she played the older version of Pearl. And then there's this movie, Pearl, that's a prequel that shows Pearl when she was younger. Now the next one is going to be uh, Maxine, her character from X, after the movie of X. Which, I mean, spoiler alert, she survives that movie, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah, me a goth. Yeah, it's, uh, like, I want to see, like, a picture of her dressed up as, like, Wednesday Adams. Even though, uh, I think, Je was it Jenna Ortega is playing Wednesday Adams, and she looks good. Yeah, this is a good stacked year for movies. And especially, like, all the horror movies, I feel like, are have been pretty good. They they've been they've been on the the better side of, eh. <laughs> like you've got eh, and you've got phenomenal and it's been all on the other half the upper half of it. Uh, I'm kind of interested. This movie Smile that's coming out in a couple of weeks looks a lot like uh, Truth or Dare, which Truth or Dare was trashy. It was just a stupid horror movie. Uh, the, the stupid smile filter that they put on everyone was, but I mean, it, it did seem like, it was a fun movie. I think I've seen it like maybe a couple of times, so I have fun watching it, even though it's just a very, uh, X and Pearl are very different beasts too. You could very easily like, well, oh, absolutely. Uh, I thought, here's the thing. I thought as far as like kills go and like, I don't want to, I'm not going to spoil Pearl, but I will say this. I feel like uh, Pearl was advertised at the very end of X, and it looked like it was just going to be a complete slaughter. This was going to be the story of Pearl just losing her mind and just going on a bender of just slaughtering everyone and everything. And it wasn't it, it wasn't like that. Um, she does kill people and a couple of animals, but it wasn't as it wasn't as, as big as I thought it was going to be. But it was, it was pretty decent. Again, well, there I go using that term again. Pretty decent. So, uh, I enjoyed it. It looked good. Mia Goth acted the hell out of that movie. That final shot of her, oh my god. The, I want to know the behind the scenes of how she filmed that shot. Because that shot is just... It's great. Uh, there's a Hellraiser movie coming out on Hulu. I am interested in this. Uh, this is actually, this is the first time someone else has played Pinhead and Doug Bradley, who is known for playing Pinhead, is like, you know what, this is going to be good. Uh, Doug Bradley is famously known for really coveting him playing that character. And I am, I, I, I'm anxious to see how this is going to go. Plus, the also simple fact is, uh, was it this Hellraiser movie comes out in a couple of weeks? I know nothing about it. I know Pinhead is a female Cenobite. That's it. That's all I know. I don't know anything else about this movie. So, could be pretty good. Anyways, so back to the drink. <laughs> I went to go see Pearl the other night, and I ordered a uh, an Old Fashioned. And it was good. Like, I'm not normally a person who would order Old Fashions, but I was kind of in the mood for one. And it was really good. So now I'm trying to recreate them. And, like, my ingredients are good. Like, I actually got the 
the actual, uh, oh, what are these called? There's a certain term for it. Um, I'm actually surprised I didn't. Luxardo, okay. I actually got the the Luxardo maraschino cherries for it. <coughs> Ooh. <coughs> and they are strong. Woo. Anyways, so I got those uh, because, like, I actually wanted... That's what was in the old-fashioned I had the other night were those kinds of maraschino cherries. And I wanted something that didn't taste like a... Or look like a neon radiated cherry. And I like the I like those because I feel like those taste more like a cherry than, like, the maraschino cherries you ch typically get, like, on an ice cream sundae. Yeah. So this was pretty good. Um, I just, I, I didn't make this quite right. Uh, I will fix it again here in a minute because I'm going to go get me another one. I'm going to do it properly and it should be much better, but mm. <laughs> Chris horror movies. Uh, for those of y'all that aren't familiar with scrubs, uh, there's a part in, in an episode of scrubs where JD and Turk, the two guys are sitting there talking and then uh carla and elliot the like basically their significant others are sitting there talking about uh something sexy or whatever like lingerie or whatever and the two guys stop their conversation like oh really you're talking about underwear and lingerie and they're like they they break like the fourth wall type of thing they're like it's real easy to get a guy to stop paying attention to you all you gotta do is just talk about shoe shopping so they immediately stop their lingerie conversation. They're like, yeah, so I was at the store the other day and I was looking at a really cute thing of pumps. And you hear inside of JD and Turk's head, they're like, shoe shopping. And so they start ignoring them and they go back to their conversation. And then, of course, the two women are like, okay, so back to what we were talking about. So that's what Chris is referencing. Anytime I talk about horror movies, he's like, horror movies. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, nerd, your, your run through movies this weekend is insane. Yeah, I saw that. Pearl, uh, today you did. See how they run? I have not heard of this movie until, like, today. And I'm kind of curious as to see what this movie's about, because apparently it's getting a lot of good reviews. Uh, The Woman King. The Woman King, I heard, is probably, like, an early front runner in what we're entering now is the... Oscar movie season, and I hear that's a good like uh, early early run for that. So uh, I might I'm, I'll probably look into that as well. Moon Age Daydream, that one I've seen that trailer twice now in theaters. It looks I don't know was it an actual movie? Is it more of like a theatrical uh, like biography of David Bowie? Cause I, 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 I mean, I would be interested in it if it was, anyways. But I mean, obviously, it's not a an actual movie about his life. It's more of a documentary. But it looks interesting. Uh, so see how they run is a Who Done It with Saoirse Ronan and Sam Rockwell. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, and Moon Age Daydream is a documentary. Cool. Uh, I do like so. David Bowie is one of those that I respect, but like outside of his popular songs, I don't know that much more about his music. I think I listened to uh I listened to one of his albums and I forgot what it was. Which one was it? Uh let me look it up real quick. I listened to one of his albums all the way through and I think it may be the one that had uh Uh, Space Odyssey, Oddity, Space Odyssey, Space Oddity on it. I think it was a Star Ziggy Stardust. Was it Ziggy Stardust? It's the one where like the cover of it is like him like outside of a bar or something. I believe. Oh no, it's not that one. 
What's the one of him outside of a bar? I'm going to have to figure out how the spacing on this is because I'm pretty sure y'all are going to answer me in the chat before I find it and I can't see the chat right now because Google is currently blocking. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go to the chat. Um, okay, y'all don't have, haven't answered it yet. <laughs> oh, no, it is. Okay, it is Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust and the spiders from Mars. Okay. It just, okay, so that didn't have Space Oddity on it. That had Suffragette City. Okay, and Starman. That's right, because that was roughly... I listened to that roughly uh, when uh, Lightyear came out. Because that's, uh, that song was in the Lightyear trailer like crazy. So because of that, I was like, I want to listen to that album. I would like to get into some David Bowie. Because David Bowie music, like all of his songs, I really like. And I was like, I want to hear I want to hear more on this. So I did listen to that album. It was, it was pretty good. Obviously, as you can tell by my background here, I'm a Pink Floyd fan. So not that this is a, a reference to Pink Floyd for uh, any kind of like copyright imagery reasons uh this just happens to be uh over here there's looks like there's a beam of white light on this side of the box and over here there's a rainbow it is no allusions to uh the cover of dark side of the moon at all whatsoever and you can't prove that in a court of law <laughs> you'll notice the sign is k west where kanye west got it wait that wasn't kanye west's oh it does say k west on it Wait, so what's Kanye West's real name? I thought it was Kanye West. I'm about to Google this now. Or ye, whatever he's calling himself now. Kanye. No, yeah, okay. So Kanye Omari West. So I'm, uh so he was born in 1977. When did that album come out? 1972. Okay, so his parents basically named him Okay, yeah, his parents may have named him after the David Bowie album, or that. I don't know. Uh, yes, that, uh, Jeremy, absolutely 100%. That is why that Batman figure is sitting right there, because today is also National Batman Day. I don't recall September 17th being National Batman Day before. Is there some reason, like, why? Like, what is it about, like, today that makes it Batman Day? Because I don't, I don't remember uh, September 17th being Batman Day before. And typically when, when a day is one of these, like, fake, ho fake holidays, one of, one of these silly holidays or whatever, um, there's a reason for it. For example, April 26th is Alien Day. 426. That's because in the movie Aliens, the colonists were on a planet that was referred to as LV426. So therefore, 426 is Alien Day. Um, there's another one coming up as well. There's like Back to the Future Day, which is the day that Marty like actually went back in in time. Or, um, yeah. I, let me see. Why? I don't know if you can Google that. Why is today Batman Day? Because it just is. Stop questioning. Uh, Batman's success over the years made him a household name, but this day is actually celebrated to commemorate his first appearance in Detective Comics back in 1939. Okay, so... He first appeared in Detective Comics, I want to say it was Detective Comics 39? Was it 39 or 29? Or 27. Yeah, so his first appearance was Detective Comics 27. That was March 30th of 1939. Why is it September 17th, though? The day was originally in June. The first Batman Day was officially June 23rd, 2014, to coincide with Comic-Con. Okay. Uh, 
there is nothing that's answering why Batman Day is all of a sudden on September 17th. Uh, but it is showing, say, so Batman Day dates. It's always on a Saturday, is apparently. So it's not necessarily the 17th that is the, the holder of the Batman Day. It's Saturday. Because this thing I'm looking at is showing in 2023, Batman Day will be on September 16th. Uh, which is Decisias of September, which is the Mexican Independence, the actual Mexican Independence Day, not Cinco de Mayo. Uh, 2024, it's on September 21st, and 2025 is September 20th. All of those days are going to be Saturdays. So for some reason, it is. Yeah. Okay, so again, I couldn't see the chat, so... <laughs> Chris, you ass. They wanted to celebrate your birthday? Uh, the issue is cover dated March 30th. Yeah, so that's what I was reading. Is like, uh, it was March... March 30th was the cover date, but the book itself was delayed. It wasn't released until later in June. The first Batman day was July 23rd, so that's what I was reading, is that it was to coincide with uh, Comic Con. Yeah, I guess yeah, I I will go with what Jeremy's saying. They wanted to celebrate my birthday. I guess that makes sense to me. I mean, I like Batman. He's a great character. Love the cartoon. Um. So, yeah. Um. I want to get. So this is the uh, Mondo, the Mondo Batman figure. They have a Joker also that I desperately want because it look the joker figure looks better than the batman but the joker figure doesn't come out until february i think so i'm having to wait for that but yeah i i desperately want that so anyways welcome to my youtube channel it is my birthday today we're celebrating my birthday so we're doing this live stream make sure you click like and hit subscribe happy birthday to me uh if you feel the need if you would like there is there is actually a Streamlabs now, so if you would like to donate, I, I made it 200 mainly just because that's how much like these figures cost. So if you would like to get me something for my birthday, I would like a one of these one six like hot toys or like the Mondo figure or something like that. There's always a couple of those that I'm interested in getting. So uh, if you would like to help uh, donate to that. And get me, like, a cool new toy for my birthday. Because I don't know what else. I don't really want or need anything else. I just like these little figure things. Um, brings me back to, like, a childhood memory of playing with my toys. Even though I don't play with these. That would be kind of weird. Uh, but if you would like to participate. Whatever the Streamlabs link is. I think Nerd found it down below in the chat. I believe it's in the chat. So you can click on it and go there and donate that way. So that's why I set the goal at 200. Um, although I know Garth uh, donated the other night. And there was also a couple of people that donated last night during the marquee. So uh, all of that will go towards something like that. Either bill paying or buying something pretty that sits behind me while I stream. That's fine, Garth. Like, uh, I, I appreciate everything that you do, Garth. So, yes. Uh, it is in the description. Cool, I put it there. <laughs> and I forgot about it. Go me. I am on top of things. Anyways, uh, I do, real quick, I want to refill this and see if I can make it just a slightly bit different. Um, so, I am going to uh, pull uh, my brother on his Twitch stream, and I'm going to do a Be Right Back, and then I'm actually going to be right back. By the way, when you see the Be Right Back on my screen now, as of today, it doesn't mean the stream is ending, okay? So, I actually have a completely different screen for when it's ending. It'll look like this. So, yeah. That, when you see that is when the stream is ending. But this one is going to be a Be Right Back, so I will be right back real quick. Hold on.
It's just mean, Garth. That's just absolutely mean right there. <laughs> so we saw it, so the stream is ending. Um, so... I do know how to pin to the top of the chat. In fact, I am pinning Garth's comment right there to the top of the chat. So, yeah. If you would like to click on that. Anyways, uh, you have any, any other questions or should we move on to doing a game real quick? Oh, God, 41 years. It does not feel like 41. I know I'm saying this knowing Garth is in the chat, but <laughs> it does not feel like 41. God. I'll fix the lighting on this. This makes my teeth look really yellow. Not a big fan. <laughs> Garth, no one left with me. It would have been funny. Well, you didn't leave either. You're still here. That's the joke, I know. Ooh, that's better. That's super strong, though. That'll be fun. Yeah, anyways. So, you have any more questions or anything else I should talk about? Or do you want me to just, like, jump into a game? I don't know if this is supposed to be, like, the streamer's choice or, like, the viewer's. What do y'all want to see? My knees feel 56. Here's the thing. Like, typically it happens... Uh, left for a few minutes for real. Uh, usually like a couple of times a year. And I think for the past for the past couple of years or so, I think it's roughly been about two times a year. And I'm due one like any day now. Uh, I will get a strong case of old man back. Where I get up out of bed and I just, I can't stand up. Like I can't do anything except like, like I have to be hunched over this whole time. And it hurts uh so i do have um what's that called the tens unit like if you go to a chiropractor if you go to a chiropractor they have this gadget that like sends like electrodes shocks or whatever into your back and i i have one of those and that thing works phenomenally if you have back issues I do recommend, like, it's not going to solve your back issues. It's n it's not a solution, but it's just a temporary, like, <sighs> fix for it. Uh, I do recommend one of those. I think they're, like, $30 or so, I believe. Um, my ex-girlfriend got it for me while we were dating. Um, and it is, it is s such a blessing. It's called a TENS unit. So, yeah, 10 as in the number with an S, a TENS unit. Uh, and they're they're really good, so uh, I like you say you have bad Lego. You said you have bad knees. Yeah, it might work for knees also. It is I don't know where mine's at. Usually it's here next to me. Usually I keep I I keep all these electronic equipment stuff right here in my drawers, but I can't find it right now. But yeah, it's a little like handheld thing. It's like kind of like my phone, but like longer, maybe a bit skinnier. And it has it where you plug in these electrodes and they stick. They have sticky stuff that sticks to your skin. And you can set it. I think it does have a set. The one I have has a setting for backs and neck and shoulders. And I believe it might have one for knees. So I have a total knee replacement. I am not looking forward to my knees giving out. There's a couple of times where I get like maybe like a little bit of pain in my knees, but yeah, not too bad. I eventually, here's the thing, in all honesty, eventually I would like to get back into shape. Um, I keep my equipment in my drawers too. Good job, Chris. Our family taught you well, I guess. Um... Yeah, Garth's puns are always great. Um, I forgot where I was going. Welcome to my stream where I'm going to talk about something and then fucking forget all of it in the next second. That's where my ADD kicks in and I can't like stay on top of it. 
So, anyways, uh, was it someone was asking? Uh, Jeremy was asking, "What were you thinking of playing tonight?" I am thinking of trying to do. I want to do a speed run of the first Super Mario Brothers. I know y'all see me play Super Mario Brothers a lot on here. That was like primarily out of all Nintendo games. That was like probably my primary one. I have gotten, I have gotten a request that when I do these streams to actually finish a game, which is fine, as long as I'm playing like Super Mario Brothers one or three, then I absolutely can finish it. I don't know if I've ever finished. I don't. I'm not 100% certain if I've ever actually finished one of the Ninja Turtle games for the old Nintendo. And I have Ninja Turtles 1, 2, and 3, which I think 3 was the Manhattan Project. Um, so the stream will be intermittent, going strong sometimes and sputtering out at other times. I mean, it's not bad so far. I know you're making a joke, but I mean, I'm looking at like down here in the software. It shows me how well this is performing and I mean, it's not bad, but it is using like like almost 40% of my CPU here. And I'm on an iMac. This isn't, uh, I'm not using a gaming PC or anything for this. So all of the processing power for this is coming straight from the computer's processor and not from a graphics card. So uh, eventually maybe we'll fix that, but. I know this is kind of the same setup when we first started doing the tagline. Um, we were out like the, the, the set for our tagline was actually our dining room uh, with curtains over the windows. Uh, that was that was the same computer here. I would just pick up this computer and move it out into the dining room, s plug everything in real quick, boot it up, load up OBS and we would stream from that. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm slightly familiar with the setup of how this all works. And especially like now, the first stream, the first stream I did on this where I was calling it like the test stream, I don't feel like that was that bad. Uh, I had even less knowledge when we first started uh, doing the tagline streams. So uh, this is working pretty well. Uh, plus, I mean, my brother also uses the same setup for his Twitch stream, so he's able to, like, weigh in if he, he's got ways to help me out and figure this out for me. So, he's a good little brother. Y'all should definitely uh, follow and watch and subscribe to him on his uh, twitch.tv slash MLP. Always be plugging. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking of doing a speed run on at least the first Super Mario Brothers. I know, again, y'all. Uh, I've done two streams already, and you've seen Super Mario Brothers each time. But yeah, if y'all have any other like uh, old Nintendo games, like good old classic ones, I may have it on here, and I could play those as well. Uh, let's see, some good news: you've only gotten ten fewer viewers than a live stream with six Schmodown people. Did I hear always be plugging? Yes, always be plugging. I kind of like that. A speed run. Yes, so a speed run, like, say, for the original uh, Mario Brothers would be running through the entire game and beating it as fast as possible. Vernon! Mister, I also have a, have a wrench on Robert's channel now. Happy the birthday. Thank you, Vernon. Very much appreciate seeing you here. So... I have blessed you with a wrench. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, doing a speed run. I think that would be fun. Is that the bourbon? It is the bourbon. Uh, I, I'm making old fashions. Uh, I am using four roses. And it's pretty good. Nerd. My show is returning Monday at 1030 Eastern. Fantastic. Uh, that's, I like the fact that you have a show, nerd, because I think that is, that is perfect for you. You love talking and reviewing movies, and I think having a show that's your personality built around, like, how Letterbox works is fantastic. That was such a good idea. You and, you and Vernon are on a really good, really good track with that. 
Uh, there's a YouTube channel that's just video game speedruns. I've seen a couple of them before. So here, yeah, Lego. Uh, speedrun in like five minutes. I fully believe I could possibly speedrun through the original Super Mario Brothers and beat it in five minutes. Uh, I don't know <laughs> old, old fashioned. What age must you be to consume an old fashioned? I don't know. I feel like it's it's when your your palate likes it. Uh, I had that Super Mario. Ma Here's the thing. I also have I have a Wii somewhere. I can't remember if it's a Wii or a Wii U. I want to say it's a Wii U. I have a Wii U somewhere as well. That I could just as easily plug in and do that. Um, I will have to reset how some stuff is set up here. Because the stream is not currently set for a Wii U. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about when we get over to the gaming. Uh, so I will have to change some things. I'm not going to be able to do the Wii U right now. Especially because I think it's buried deep in my closet under all the boxes that these things came in. <laughs> so, my closet is full of, like, boxes of, like, hot toys and Mondo figures and any other, like, little uh, gadgets, figures, whatever that I have. Little tchotchkes, like, laying around. Uh, like, Funko boxes that were shipped in. So, Yeah. No one has no one has a Wii U. You lie. I have a Wii U somewhere, and it has like the the Mario Brothers. I forgot what's all on there. What games I have for it? I think I might have. I think I have a I have a Mario Brothers in there. A side scrolling Mario Brothers, like so Super Mario Brothers Wii U or Super Mario U. Um, and I believe I have a Mario Kart for it. Because I, I liked Mario Kart. Mario Kart was a lot of fun. I had a friend. I talked about uh, this be this friend before. I had a friend when I was growing up. Uh, <laughs> she was the definition of the girl next door for me. Uh, super, super huge crush on her. Um, she's married now with kids. She's happy. She's cool. But uh, used to go over to her, her house all the time. We used to play like basketball in her driveway or she had a super nintendo and we would always play like uh super mario kart it was a lot of fun so that's where my love for like super mario kart first started i don't know what the u stands for as far as wii u i did like wii sports is fantastic I did have friends, so it used to be like in mid two thousands. I had some friends that I would uh, hang out with on the weekends. Like it never fails. I would work Monday through Friday. I had a regular Monday through Friday job. Saturday and Sunday, I would pack up all my stuff and I would go to their apartment or house or whatever and hang out with them for like the entire weekend. And uh, they like this was the this was my prime days where I should be like out and about and meeting and hanging out with people no that's not me I was always like an introvert this this is surprising for me to do uh but I used to go hang out and like that those were the type of people we would sit like on their apartment balcony and just talk the night away sitting there having beers Knocking back beer after beer and just hang out talking. So much fun. And I miss those days. Um, they moved away. So they're not here anymore. But yeah, that was that was something that we used to do is like sit there and like drink a bunch. And then we would go play Wii Sports. So Robert, drunk off of like almost like an entire 12 pack of beer trying to play uh, the Wii Sports Bowling. Where you're holding that Wii remote. And I would make sure I had the wrist strap on. Because I'm not throwing that Wii remote through their TV. But I'd be like. Strike! <laughs> that's, that's how it was almost every weekend. So uh, It was very short lived Nintendo system. Between the Wii and the Switch. Yeah the Wii U. Yeah. I don't have, Garth, I don't have that many friends. Like, I don't, I don't really have, like, friends that I hang out with in person anymore. Most, all of my good close friends have all moved away from Austin, so. Uh, Wii U, 
has t donated $25. Thank you, Wii U. Very much appreciated, Wii U. I guess I'm going to have to go find your ass out of my closet, dig you up, and plug you in. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> yeah, Wii Sports Bowling was fantastic. I actually, I can't remember like any of the other games on there. I just remember bowling. We used to play the hell out of bowling. The other one that was fun, I do remember we had a Mario Party. And if y'all remember the Wii, with like how you, a lot of it was based off of you moving the Wii remote. We had, uh, again, same friends I'm hanging out with after we've had a bunch of drinks. We're sitting there playing Mario Party. And I very much remember one of the mini games was all the characters on the screen in a row. And your character has like a can of soda. The object of the game is to shake this can of soda enough where at the end of the timer, you crack open the top and whoever soda shoots up the highest wins. Well, you win by shaking the shit out of your Wii Remote. Some of y'all may already know where I'm going with this. <laughs> so this was like a row of like... Depending on who's playing at any given time, anywhere like four or five of us, all standing in a row, staring at this TV, all holding our remote. Someone's going to clip that out. I fucking just... I, I did that to myself. I understand. But everyone's in there shaking the Wii remote and then cracking open the soda. So much fun. So much fun. I love that. I love that. I wish we filmed that because that would be great to see like later. Much like me just now doing that. Uh, which I love the fact that if anyone's going to clip that out for this. Uh, you get like make sure you follow me here and donate. <laughs> it's got all that attached to it. But <laughs> circle jerk Wii game. Almost. <laughs> yeah I could clip it too. Lego, I could clip my own thing. That might be funny. Like, I'll, I'm, I might actually clip that out myself and make a GIF out of it. Because <laughs> that's going to be a GIF that's going to look great out of context. But will you is the question. Yeah, probably not. Probably won't. Yeah, just saying. Anyways, let's play some, uh, let's play some Nintendo here. Let me get this uh, thing booted up here. You know, the one thing I like about this Nintendo Classic is I don't have to blow into the cartridge to get it started. Uh, we are going to start with a... I am going to try to start with a speed run of Super Mario Brothers. So... Here we go. The microphone's in the way. This is not much of a speed run. So in a, in a true speed run, you don't stop for a mushroom like that. But I know I'm going to need that. Uh, I don't care about those. Uh, this is a preliminary speed run. I probably will try this again. Also because I don't have a timer and we don't have anyone like keeping official ch like time and check of this. But... There we go. That was like, what, 20 seconds already done with the first one? <laughs> Jeremy. Yeah, so you need that gif of me making that motion with the caption, Mario Party, am I right? And here's the thing, I'm actually willing to bet most people will be like, I completely understand that reference. Ah, damn it. It's not much of a speed run if you die. The point of a speed run is actually you don't die, you just make it through the entire game. Alright, so I'm gonna be honest, the, uh, what was it, last night, was it last night? It was like either last night or the night before, I actually tried this in anticipation of doing this, 
during the stream and I had this whole game beat within five minutes I didn't die once I swear to god you're just gonna have to believe me cuz there's no other choice This is one of those things, like, I played this game so many times when I was a kid, like, the muscle memory of how to, how and when to hit the button is never going to disappear. I will always know exactly what to hit, when to hit it. <laughs> Except for that time. <laughs> Oh, by the way, this one's cool. Um, so I purposely set this this screen up here right now with the game, the gaming over here. Uh, this one, if uh, if anyone donates during this, the zombie hand actually comes out of the pipe. Although I don't know why you would donate. I'm a loser, like losing my life here. Game over. Start all over. Okay. So that was practice. All right. I don't know if anyone wants to uh, run a timer because I don't know how to run the timer in here. I might need a uh, Vernon or Wingblade to help me on that. I don't know how to put a timer on this screen, but if y'all would like, I'm going to now officially attempt to beat this game within five minutes. <laughs> nerd. Well, that was fast. Bravo. Thank you, nerd. Appreciate your support. So, yeah, let's try this. If, uh, I, again, I don't know if anyone wants to keep track. I'll give, uh, I'll give it a couple of seconds here for someone to say, like, I will. If not, that's cool. You're not supposed to run the Goombas that way. Oh, you think? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're making fun of the uh, the automated computer just doing that, like in this demo. Here's the thing. This is, I miss video games that look and work this way. Like, I feel like this is what catered to my nostalgia. I get why video games are a lot more realistic nowadays, or at least the the graphics are way better. Watching my brother play Fortnite on his streams, Twitch.tv, yeah, see? <laughs> the zombie hand pops up out of the, uh, out of the pipe. Of course, I can't read what it says, but... <laughs> I love it because again like when a donation comes in I get a notification on my watch so I can see who actually donates it even though they put like a, a a different name on here so thank you thank you for that donation very much appreciated thank you for being here anyways all right so let's try this within five minutes Right now, I've got it at 10.49 Central Time. I'll give it till 10.50. We'll give it until 10.50, and then I'll hit start, and we'll see how quickly I can get through this. Watch this be like 30 minutes later, he's finally... There we go. 10.50. Go. 30 minutes later, and he's finally finished the game. <gasps> it doesn't. 
I know, you're not supposed to run into Goombas like that, I get it. So all that shit about muscle memory and knowing when to hit the button, yeah, that was complete bullshit, apparently. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know why my customers listen to me. I, I, I don't know anything about anything, so... Don't know why I played in the first class league. I don't know anything about movie trivia, just... It's a good cherry, though. I do know that. Nope. Oh, thank God. There's a speed run. Let's sit here and do nothing. Yeah, this is not what a speed run looks like. I have not... I've played this game a lot as a kid. I have not been playing this game a lot lately. So, this is still me, like... Brushing the dust off of... My ability to play this game. I think five minutes is absolutely 100%, like, generous. Watching Chris getting mad during Fall Guys. I still, like, so here's the thing. Again, most of y'all know, I'm typically working while my brother's streaming. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he's able to be here while I'm streaming. But, uh, I, t like, I don't know if I've actually ever watched him play Fall Guys. I've seen Fall Guys before because I've seen videos from other streamers, but... Oh yeah, that's right, I can't do shit because I'm Tiny Mario. Well, here's where most of my time's gonna be wasted is trying to get up on this stupid fucking block. There we go. <laughs> Bite your tongue, Jeremy. Just go. Who cares about the stupid coins? Just run. The point of a speed run is to run. And apparently be on speed. Oh, okay. I just think, I don't think, like, you can't actually, uh, speedrun modern video games. Most of the modern video games are like, there's no such thing as a speedrun on Fortnite. Mainly Fortnite is a timed game, and the game controls the time. Yeah, so, to Gar's point, to Gar's point, a, a true speedrun, someone who, first of all, you don't get a game over screen ever on a speedrun, so, 10.54, I it was four minutes in, and I probably made it about halfway through that run, so, yeah, no, that's not a speedrun, so, yeah, to Gar's point, uh, videos that I've seen of people doing speedruns, first of all, they don't die. That's crucial to a speedrun, is you don't die. Um, second of all, most of them are probably not actually talking to an audience. They're just running through that game. 
here's the thing, like, I swear to God, last night, I think, again, I think it was last night, I was trying this as a speed run, and I got to, like, uh, world, no, I actually got to world 8-4 before I started dying. There are time modes in Fortnite, but not really speedruns. Yeah, because, like, is Fortnite one of those where they refer to each time you're playing as a campaign? I know some video games refer to them as campaigns. <gasps> you know what would be fun? I haven't done this in years. I would love to go back and play, uh... Grand Theft Auto Vice City. That was a fun game. That was probably like one of the... Uh... Is it Elvira's birthday also? Hold on. L l let's put a hold on this. I want to go through... and I haven't done this in years. For yeah, Fortnite's a battle royale. I haven't done this in years. Let's switch this real quick. Um... Uh, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to try something here. I want to go through... Oh, this is interesting. Already off the bat, this is interesting. I want to see how this is going to work. I, I'm i very apprehensive about trying this because I haven't actually been able to test it. I just created this today, and I'm not sure if this is going to work. I have one other screen that I've gotten set up. Let's see if this actually works. This is going to be, this might be weird for a second, y'all. There we go. Y'all can hear me now, right? I know y'all can hear me now. Anyways. So, I want... I, I'm working on some form, and... Okay, you can see me. Okay, you can see me over, over off to the side. I'm working on some form of, like, how I can share my computer screen with y'all so y'all can see exactly what I'm looking at. For, like, eventually I do want to dig into, like, y'all sending me YouTube videos or something to react to. Um, which, I know some of y'all are going to troll me and you're probably going to send me, like, a nonchalant video that's just going to have a bunch of people, like, in movies puking because I can't stand that. And, please don't. <laughs> but, I wanted to go through, and I was thinking about this earlier today because it's been a while since I've done that. Who all was born on the same day as me. So, looking through this, like, number one right off the bat, Boz Lerman? That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, August Peru. Augustus Peru. I don't know who this is right off the bat. I know I've seen that name. I haven't seen about a boy or... I've seen Kick-Ass 2, but I don't know who they play in Kick-Ass 2. 
Really? I w- like September 17th, there's another Garth... Oh, it's a Garth Murray, not Garth McMurray. That would have been fucking hilarious. Oh, Danny Ramirez from uh, from Falcon and Winter Sol- Soldier. Oh, he's also in uh, Maverick. So here's the here's reason. I haven't done this in years, and here's why I like doing this every couple of years. It's because every couple of years, there's a couple of people that gain a lot more popularity. For example, Danny Ramirez and Danielle Brooks. Uh, Danielle Brooks, uh, she was in Peacemaker. I do know her, I know of her more from Orange is the New Black, because I watched the first couple of seasons of that, and I liked her in that. Um, it's easier to go to Wikipedia for September 17th. Well, okay, so let's try that. Okay, so events. Okay, actually, you know what? I like this. I like this because it's not only going to give me other celebrities' birthdays, it's going to give me stuff like events. Um, there's one of it. I can't remember what it was, but I remember there being one very, uh, very crucial event to... I want to say it was a war. I want to say it was something like Civil War or whatever. George B. McKellen halts the northward drive of Robert E. Lee's Confederate Army in the single day battle. Of the blood. Okay, so this is what I was thinking of, probably. The bloodiest day in American military history. Not that I like, hey, cool, I shared the birthday with the bloodiest day in American military. God, that's fucked up. Um. But yeah, just looking to see what else happened on this day in the past. Is that what the heading events is for? Yes, it's for events. <laughs> Thank you, nerd. Um, I was born on the same day as all of these people died in wars. Nineteen seventy six, the space shuttle Enterprise. That doesn't look like the Enterprise to me. Okay, the Enterprise as I know it looks a lot different. But that might just be me. Oh, interesting! I did not know this in two thousand one. The New York Stock Exchange stock exchange. Reopened for trading after September 11th. The longest closure since the Great Depression? Wait, that was the longest closure? Like six days? Damn, that's insane. Wait, what? That was what, 1787? You gotta be kidding me. The United States Constitution is signed in Philadelphia. Holy shit. I didn't know I shared a birthday with that particular day. That's insane. Oh, that's wild right there. (laughs) Not the Magna Carta, the Constitution. That's crazy. That is... That's, like, for some reason... 41 years old today. Didn't know that. Thank you, Garth. (laughs) Uh, Which, I mean, here's the thing. This is what's gonna make sense here. Garth famously lives in Boston. I visited Boston. I had like, like I went there with my, it was my ex-girlfriend. She was going there for um, some kind of meeting that she was in with her school. And um, 
had no real like desire to go to Boston. Sorry, Garth. Um, there just wasn't anything about Boston that was a giant draw for me. But when you get there, Boston is awesome. the The ability to walk around and see these like famous historic places, like I'm not like super big on history like I don't mind reading about it but like I'm not super big like I need to go be in that spot but when you're there in Boston with like all the history that it has in that specific city um I think it hit me when I was at the spot of the Boston Massacre and there's a plaque there that says this is where the Boston Massacre takes place and of course I learned about Boston Massacre in grade school cool I knew of the the Boston Massacre and what it was. Being, like, standing on the ground where it takes place is a whole new, another level that I don't feel like people understand until you're physically there. Uh, Boston is a great city to go visit, and I would highly recommend it. Early beginnings of the NFL founded. Is that in Boston or is that like actually on here? Like is that on the screen and I just don't know it? Am I not seeing that? Where are you seeing that, nerd? I guess I could just like fucking look at the screen and eventually I might find it, but. Oh, there it is. The National Football League is organized as the American Professional Football Association in Canton, Ohio in 1920. Interesting. Which is great because I'm not that big into football. <laughs> the most I will get into football is watching uh, University of Texas play. Of course, I'm in Austin, so that's the only like football team we have to follow. Although we have the... Uh, Austin FC soccer team now, uh, which I might get into soccer. I wouldn't mind getting into soccer. It looks pretty interesting. I got friends that are into it, so. Nineteen twenty, yeah. All right, so births. Some of these people. This is gonna be one of those. I'm gonna run through it and see like what name I recognize, especially because we're in the eighteen hundreds still. So. Billy the Kid? Billy the Kid was born on September 17th? Interesting. I feel like I'm looking at this for like the first time. Um, I don't see anything else yet. That Hank Williams, okay, Hank Williams, uh, American singer, songwriter, and guitarist, also uh, very well known for being uh, someone who Hayward in the Shawshank Redemption wanted to hear his record albums. Uh, there's actually a scene of Hayward listening to Hank Williams as well. Roddy McDowell, I know uh, it was like Garth called this one out earlier, but yeah, Roddy McDowell, um, most famously known for Planet of the Apes and Fright Night. David Huddleston, I feel like I've, it's an actor. I feel like I know who this is. What was he in? Santa Claus the movie. Joe's apartment. Oh, the big. Le oh, okay. He was the Big Lebowski in the Big Lebowski. Okay, that's cool. Interesting. He was born in 1930. He died in 2016. 1930. So he was in the 60s in the Big Lebowski. Anne Bancroft. That's a good one. 
Robert B. Parker, not the uh, the movie trivia schmodown competitor. <laughs> if it was, he's looking great. Paul Benedict in 1938. Paul Benedict is one that um, he was. Uh, my knowledge of him is primarily from uh, Sesame Street. He was the numbers painter. So those of y'all that watch Sesame Street, well, there's no image of him. He was the one that would go around, if y'all are familiar, I don't know, I'm guessing they stopped his bit when he passed away in 2008, but he would go around and paint numbers on things, and like things, people. He was basically a graffiti artist of Sesame Street, painting numbers. <laughs> Uh, I feel like there was something else that he was in that I rec I would recognize him from. Oh, Spinal Tap, yeah. Adam's Family. Oh, he was a judge in Adam's Family. That's right. Devil's Advocate. I don't remember him in that. I need to go back and watch that again. Man with Two Brains. He was the butler. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I pr I like. I see his name and I immediately know that he was that numbers painter guy from Sesame Street. Garth Murray. So where's Garth Murray at? Did I pass him already? Did I pass a Garth Murray? I don't see it yet. Yeah. Lupe Antaveros. This... Oh, yeah. She was Yolanda Salvador in uh, Selena. Okay. She was good at... So... Oh, this is this is a hard role for her because Lupe. I don't know how familiar y'all are with the story of Selena. Of course, I'm in Texas, so Selena's big a big deal here. Uh, but uh, Yolanda Salvador, of course, was the the person who killed Selena, the head of her fan club, and Lupe Ontiveros uh, played her in the in the movie, the J Lo movie in '97. And she did phenomenal at that. Man, she did good. Garth Murray. Garth Murray is 1982. Okay, so I just haven't gotten there yet. I like, there's a lot of like sports people. And I'm like, I have no idea who this is. John Ritter. John Ritter was born September 17th. Okay. I do like John Ritter. A lot of the, oh, I, I like, I've seen a lot of stuff he was in. Of course, Three's Company. Um, we, we watched uh, Stay Tuned the other night over on uh, Fans View Film Favorites. He was in that. Um, of course, Bride of Chucky, Bad Santa, Scrubs. He was JD's father in Scrubs. So. Cassandra Peterson. So there's Elvira. Yeah. 1951. She's looking pretty good for being born in 1951. She's she still looks I've seen I've seen images and video of her recently. She still looks good. So, she's doing she's doing all the right things as far as taking care of herself. Rita Rudner. Rita Rudner also she was in, uh, I believe she was in Saturday Night Live, if I remember correctly. Was she? Was she not in Saturday Night Live? She was one of those that, like, she should have been in Saturday Night Live and she wasn't. Yeah, doesn't look like she was actually ever in Saturday Night Live. I could have sworn she was. Interesting. Hmm.
Yeah, Cassandra Peterson, Elvira. Bill Irwin. Bill Irwin is one that I've been very familiar. Oh, that's the wrestler. Is This isn't the actor, though, right? Or am I thinking of someone different? Who was... Who was the one in... He was in The Grinch, who I'm thinking of. I thought his name was Bill Irwin. This is not The Grinch I was thinking of. I'm thinking of the, uh, the Jim Carrey one. Yeah, Bill Irwin. Okay, so this is a completely different Bill Irwin. So this Bill Irwin that I'm thinking of was... Uh, he was he was like a vaudeville clown character. Uh, he was also on Sesame Street. He was a person that uh, wore like an oversized tux. You always saw him running across the screen, like chasing his top hat. His top hat was on the floor, and he would always like reach down to pick it up, and then he would inadvertently kick it as he was trying to pick it up. So he was uh, the father in. Jim Carrey's The Grinch. I think he was the father of Cindy Lou Who, I believe. Yeah, Lou Lou Who. So yeah, he was Cindy Lou Who's father. Charles Martinet was born this day. He's the voice of Mario. It's me, Mario. Or however he does it. Interesting. There's some good ones on here. Like, some of these I, I don't feel like I actually knew. Like, Boz Lerman. Yeah. James Urbanek. Ur Urbaniak. Kyle Chandler. Kyle Chandler was born on September 17th. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Brian Singer. So, Brian Singer, for a while, I would say Brian Singer was probably, like, the predominantly, as far as, like, I'm concerned, the most, like, famous person I, I'm aware of. Uh, only because, again, how much I like uh, The Usual Suspects. So, this isn't one I normally am going to be talking about <laughs> anymore, but... <laughs> uh, Doug E. Fresh. He was a rapper. Yeah. I remember him as him during the nineties. Pumpkinhead. There was a rapper named Pumpkinhead. Okay. Flow Rida. Flow Rida was born on September seventeenth. Shoot, I did not know that. Uh, shorty got the apple bottom jeans. I'm not gonna continue that. But yeah, his breakout single "Low." Yeah. I did not know did not know that Flo Rida was there's Garth Murray yeah Canadian ice hockey player interesting dude this is super like super cool Patrick Mahomes oh okay yeah so Patrick Mahomes was also in 1995 fuck I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I am like super old. He was born in 95. I was on the precipice of going to high school at that time. <laughs> oh, deaths. I don't know if this one's necessarily going to be fun, but who all died on my birthday? Uh, these are going to be a lot of people I'm probably, I probably have not heard of other than like, say, Philip the, Philip the fourth, probably heard about him in grade school history class. I'm willing to bet in some form or another. Red Skelton. Oh, Red Skelton. That sucks. Wasn't Red... Sk Red Skelton was in... Uh, wasn't Red Skelton in... Uh, Peach Dragon? 
or am I thinking of something else? I always got Red Skelton mixed up with someone else. Who is who I'm thinking of from Peach Dragon. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Who am I thinking of from Peach Dragon? Because I always get them confused. I think I... I can't spell Pe Peach Dragon, apparently. Uh, I think I'm thinking of, So that was Red Skelton. I think I'm thinking of Red Buttons. I think that's what it is. I'm confusing Red Buttons. Yes. This is who I was thinking of. So Red Buttons, I confuse with Red Skelton. Okay. Dick Durock. Dick Durock was a uh, Swamp Thing. Yeah. Died on September 17th in 2009. Okay. George Hamilton? That's not... Okay, yeah. It's not the George... <laughs> not George Hamilton that I'm thinking of. The inventor of Gore-Tex, Robert W. Gore. Uh, so I wore Gore-Tex in the military. Uh, one of our uh, like combat gear, especially, I think it was the chemical warfare. So whenever uh, we were in a situation where there may be like uh, smoke bombs or something like that, uh, we had the, the mop gear. Uh, Gore. Oh no, 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 no. What was Gore-Tex? What was Gore? Gore-Tex. That's not what I'm thinking of. Okay, so forget all that I just said. Gore-Tex was kind of like the vinyl, the vinyl coat that we had for like inclement weather. So whether it was cold or rainy, that was the the out the clothing that we had, and it's good. It was really good quality, good quality material. Yeah, that's why. So kind of like this. So when it was raining outside, water would hit the the material and it would just bead. Instead of like regular like cotton here where it would just soak into it, it would bead off of it. That's interesting. And holidays and Australian Citizenship Day? Interesting. Okay. So that looks like all like the uh, all the cool all the cool things from from September 17th. <laughs> and you live in Texas. Sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, we can skip deaths. That darn cat. So I don't think that was, that wasn't, uh, Dougie Fresh. That was Dougie Doug that was in dar that darn cat. Dougie Doug was also, uh, Sanka in Cool Runnings. <laughs> Congrats, Aussies. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Aussies! Welcome to the the world of Australia, or whatever they do in that country. Uh, your birthday's been over for twenty four minutes here. Well, end of the stream. Thanks for coming out. Um, yeah, I know. I still got like about thirty six minutes here. You know, what? here's the thing. I'm gonna wind this down here in a little bit. I am going to go refill my drink. It's going to be the last drink of the night because I still have to work tomorrow. And man, I will tell you right off the bat, listening to customers talk about their cable service when you've had too many drinks the night before, not fun. So I'm still watching it tonight. But yeah, I want to do one more and I'll be right back. And we'll finish it. We'll, we'll see what y'all want to do. Do you want to do like more like ask me almost anything or... Uh, is there something else you want me to look at or look up and, uh, or do you want me to play like another Nintendo game or something? Uh, Garth, what was the name of their bobsled in Cool Runnings? Shit.
I cannot remember. So, funny story about Cool Runnings. Real quick. I saw it in a theater. Great, now i got the hiccups. I'm going to get some water too. I saw it in the theater with like a church group. It was when I was a teenager because that movie came out like what, 93, 94, something like that. So it was, I, w- I was a little older than like 10 or 11, I believe, when that came out. Oh, it is Cool Runnings. Okay. So I remember going to see that. Again, I was with a church group. We went to go see that movie. But then we were forced out of the theater. Uh, there's a scene in that movie where uh, Junior Junior Bevel, who's like this little wussy character, basically. He's like a, 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 a wussy whipped boy. I don't mean that like toxic masculinity masculinity I can't say the word I don't mean that toxic wise that's the way the movie sets it up they set him up to be this like wussy submissive character and his teammate Yul Brenner at one point in that movie is whole, they're in the bathroom and they're standing in front of a mirror and he's like you see Junior Bevel I'm not even going to try to uh, imitate a Jamaican accent on stream in front of the public <laughs> like you see Junior Bevel what I see is like this badass, don't take no stuff from nobody. And he made him repeat that. And the people that were in charge of the church group had a problem with him constantly saying, I'm a badass, I'm a badass, I'm a badass. Like, that's way too much language for us. We're going to leave. So everyone had to leave the theater because of that. I'm like, oh my. Looking at, like, at the time, I kind of understood because I was still like a kid, early teenager. And I was with a church group, so I understood that. But now as an adult, I'm like, oh, if you got problems with the word ass, you're going to have a lot of problems in life. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be political or anything, but man, that's, that's, that's going to that's gonna throw a stone into uh, your ability to leave, live a normal life here. So, anyways... Uh, I'm going to go refresh my drink real quick, and I'll be right back, as this screen is going to say.
Okay. So. Catching up here. She didn't like you using the word sucker. <laughs> yeah, so here's the thing. So real quick, during that, that little break right there, um... I go like I go to the kitchen. The kitchen in our apartment is like kind of like on the other side of the apartment where I'm at, but it's closer to my brother's room. I knock on his door and I'm like, "Hey, everything's still looking good. Everything's still sounding good." And he's playing. He still has the stream open. I can hear me on his computer while he's sitting there. <laughs> it's weird how the delay works, and it's funny because that's happened the other way around. I've heard him doing his Twitch streams. Y'all have heard me. Some of y'all who watch his Twitch streams like regularly. You've heard me like bust into his room a couple of times to try to like I think I'm being funny. I don't know, but I'm trying to like add like some humor, or, like some kind of a comment to his stream. I like running into his room, saying something, and then coming back to my room where his stream is up and I'm playing it, and I can hear me in his room on my computer. It's so funny how the delay works on here, but yeah. Um... Twitch delays like 10 seconds. YouTube's around 30 to 45. Really? There's a that huge of a delay? <laughs> For YouTube live streams, go to the settings, click on two times. I didn't think the, uh, the YouTube delay is that bad. So I left and went over there and uh, I heard in his room, I heard me in his room saying, refresh my drink, which... I feel like I said like right before I actually cut off and went to went to that break there. So, interesting. Um, what else do y'all want? So, do y'all got any more questions or any other topics you want to hear me talk about? Or is there another like Nintendo game you want me to run through? Or is there something else you want me to look up and talk about off of the internet? I can do the I, I can do all of those. I don't have any uh, sound officially connected through this yet, so I can't watch and react to a YouTube video. Uh, I will get that done in the future, uh, but I don't know how to have that set up to be able to route the sound from my computer through the stream so y'all can hear it too. But that will eventually happen as well. So, well, we're almost like at two hours on here. Uh, thank y'all for being here on this stream. Again, I don't, um, I, I, I don't have too many friends that are still in the Austin area that I'm able to like go and physically hang out with. Um, most of my friends at this point are all <laughs> virtual. They're all friends like through the internet. So those of y'all, I mean, most of y'all that are watching right now, that's that's my connections with people is that. Watch a video of a real speed run through Mario Brothers. <laughs> Emphasis on real. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, I felt like the one I did the other night, I felt like that was pretty good. I was like, okay, I feel pretty confident like putting myself out there and putting this on, scr on the stream. And I was wrong. <laughs> but, I mean, here's the thing. As much as my brother would probably attest to this, I don't feel like necessarily like I'm completely ego driven. <clears throat> I mean, ego driven is what made me want to play, is what makes me want to play movie trivia to begin with, even before I found the Schmodown. I just really liked movie trivia. I just, I always had like a natural ability to just remember things about movies. And I didn't realize this until. We would have like family dinners and stuff and I would always like our family dinners for the most part would always consist of us talking about movies uh, as much as our mom didn't like it. <laughs> and I just remember like being able to recall things and uh, like my for a while there I don't know how good this is anymore but for a while there I used to like be really proud of myself for my ability to play Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. 
uh, Kevin Bacon has come out with a lot more movies since the last time I looked, and I'm not that familiar with his current filmography, but I used to play that all the time. Or used to have, like, uh, not only our parents would challenge us, but whenever we would go, like, for family events, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, our mom and dad would always be like, hey, someone challenge uh, challenge Robert to a uh, Kevin Bacon thing. So then I, I would have random people, like, spouting off, like, Tom Cruise! And I'm like, cool, Tom Cruise was in A Few Good Men with Kevin Bacon. Next! So stuff like that. Um, but I think it, that was something like I think because of those when I was younger, it kind of like built up the ego to where I'm like, I feel like I could probably participate in movie trivia. And of course I would go with like friends and like significant others to like bar trivia. And anytime they would ask any kind of a question that was movie related, immediately would get it. Of course. That is a bar l trivia level. So, um, God, what was one question that they, that they asked? Who played... Damn it. It was like, who was the... The arms... Who, who was playing the person who wanted to buy guns in... Spider-Man Homecoming? And it was uh, Childish Gambino, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Donald Glover. Uh, and so I was like, oh, this is easy. And then when they read off what the answer, no, none of the other tables at this particular bar trivia knew that. And I was like, that's not that hard, I don't think. So, the last thing he did was they, them on Peacock. I wanted to watch that, actually. I forgot about that movie. Um, I've heard, like, both ways. I've heard it was, like, really bad, but I've also heard it's still, like, it's not offensive. The whole, that movie, if y'all aren't familiar, real quick, that movie, They, Them, is a horror movie about a gay conversion camp. Uh, which you would, uh, obviously is a horror movie. <laughs> but, I heard that, like, the take on addressing it being a gay conversion camp that that part wasn't bad like that was respectful to uh still respectful to people of the lgbtq community it was just a bad movie in general not 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 a, a comment on the the subject matter of the movie it was just a badly made movie kevin bacon to mark Wahlberg. Again, Garth, it's been a while since I played this. Now, here's the thing, though. Now that I'm doing the streaming thing, this is a fun game. And I actually do like the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon game. This may be something that, uh, like, while I'm sitting here talking to customers throughout the day, I may be uh, studying Kevin Bacon's filmography again to be able to play this. I don't feel like it's going to be that hard for me to study up on it, but... Uh, I definitely am going to need to take some glances at it before I'm able to fully do what I'm thinking. Kevin Bacon to Mark Wahlberg. Were they in a movie together? Am I going to feel stupid about this? I know it. Kevin Bacon... Too. Kevin Bacon, the Mark Wahlberg. I can do it in two. You can do it in two? Mm-hmm. So they're not in a movie together. Actually, I can do it in one. So they are in a Wait. movie together. No, I can do it in two. So here, here, here's the thing for clarification. The original rules for Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon is that you're able to connect Kevin Bacon to another actor through other actors they've worked with within six connections. So you're saying so you're saying you're able to do it in two. So Mark Wahlberg was in a movie with someone, and then that someone was in a movie with Kevin Bacon. Correct. Okay. Garth is saying that he could do it in one. 
So if it's done in one, that means that Mark Wahlberg is in a movie with Kevin Bacon. I can't remember that one. No! No, there is one, and I know why Garth got it too. Fuck yeah. Good job, Garth. Is it in Boston? It is in Boston. And oh, by me saying that, Garth it. knows exactly what fucking movie I'm talking about. I think I got it too. I, it's, was it Departed? No. I couldn't remember if Kevin Bacon was in that. It wasn't, yeah, no. Uh, I, I got it. The Town? No. Neither one of them. So, here's my tie to it, and the second I start saying this, you're going to feel like, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's my brother's uh, shoulder and chin. Hi. <laughs> he can be on my stream, too. Uh, so, I am tied to this because I was in Boston the day bo- like the day oh, or two before. That? Huh? They are both in that? Yeah. I knew Mark Wahlberg was in that. So, uh, the movie is Patriot's Day. Which is a movie based off of the uh, the bombing in Boston, the Boston uh, Marathon bombing. I was in the one time I went to Boston was like two days before that bombing, or I left. I left on Sunday. The marathon was on a Monday. Thank you, Garth. Good job, sir. Um, you want to know what my connection was that I got? What? Uh, Kevin Bacon was in. Crazy Stupid Love with Steve Crow, who was in Date Night with Mark Wahlberg. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I forgot Patriot's Day. That's a good one. Uh, Yeah, Kevin Bacon was like the superior officer or something in that. While Mark Wahlberg was the one cop they just happened to focus on for that movie. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, Mark Wahlberg's character was completely fictional. I think Kevin Bacon's character may have been fictional also. Uh, There was like, in that entire movie, there was maybe like four fictional characters and everyone else was uh, was based off a real person. Uh, that was that was a pretty good movie. I kind of I, I liked that movie. I th- I have actually watched it a couple of times. Uh, Garth, as someone from Boston, how did you feel about that movie? Um, so for the record of let me backtrack and tell this story. I was the one time I was in Boston. I was talking about earlier at the beginning of this stream was the weekend of that Boston Marathon, and I'm. <sighs> I can't believe it. I was at Boston at that time. Here in Boston, we hate the movie because it's totally fake. So, here's the thing. Like, what part, like, what was fake about it? Because from the news stories that were released, I feel like at least the stuff that was talked about in the news, they got that right. But... I'm curious, like, what's the part of it in between that was fate? Lola. Cat is just wandering around meowing. She is, hi. She is 17 years old. This is all she does nowadays is just wander around this apartment meowing for no reason. She's got food. She's just like, hey, what's going on? Come here. I know, uh, hey, come on. Wow. Yeah, exactly. I know I I know people like to see the kitty cat, so Garth is a huge fan of you, so. Um they got facts wrong in creative fictional characters instead of basing on real life heroes. I, I and I I remember that. Uh so yeah, I do remember that like again, Mark Wahlberg's character was fictional. He was not based off of a real person. Really? You don't say. You don't want to be here. Okay. Would you like to go to the bed? You would like to go to the bed. Um. <laughs> Lola. That's l- the lo- Lola is blue. Don't look into the light. Yeah, don't look in the light. Good lord, you're looking directly into it, you goofball. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I would keep her from doing that as much as possible also. 
Uh, so it was just my understanding of like primarily like there's a couple of key things in that is uh, the part where they're on the the MIT campus where they they steal the the car and shoot the campus officer that was true. Um, the part where it's like in the back alley where uh, the older brother gets run over during the shootout, that part was true. And then, of course, everything with, uh, uh, with was it Jokar at the end where he was in the boat and they find him in that neighborhood, all that was true. That I know was true because uh, I was working... At, I feel like I, I can say this now. Some people probably already know this, but I don't work for them anymore, and uh, I will probably very likely talk about them again. Uh, I was working at Best Buy at the time, and that's where I was selling appliances. And the day that they caught Joe Carr in the back of that boat, uh, they had the news... On if y'all, those of y'all who've been to Best Buy, y'all know there's typically like a wall of TVs, like in the back in the TV section, so you can see like the TV picture quality and everything. Uh, by the way, that's all fake. Those are all purposely set to look a certain way in a retail store. That's not actually accurate as to how it would look in your home. Don't believe that picture. Read your own stats before you go buy a new TV. Anyways, um. At that moment when that was actually happening, that was broadcast on the TV. And every single person in my store was watching that news as they captured him out of the back of that boat. Even here in Austin, Texas, everyone was focused on on that moment. And that's insane. And I was sitting there like I was just in Boston a few days ago. Or, well, no, that was about, like, what, a week later, roughly? I think it was, like, a week later that they caught him. So, yeah, I was like, yeah, last week I was up there in Boston, and my, all my coworkers knew, and they're like, oh, my God, how does that feel? I was like, fucking weird. Uh, the night that happened, we were stuck inside our comic store because they shut down the town and put us all in a curvy. Yeah, yeah, here's the thing. Uh, huge credit to uh, the city of Boston. They didn't fuck around on that. They said, all of you, you stay in your house. We're going to find these fuckers. And they did a damn good job of that, too. Uh, yeah, that was that was insane. So, from, from my point of view, here... Uh, quickly, my story. I know Garth has heard this. A couple of other people may have heard this. I'll put this on the stream. The So we left Boston the Sunday before. The Boston Marathon was on a Monday. We left the Sunday before out of Logan International Airport, which is coincidentally the same airport that the 9-11 bombers flew out of. So uh, we left on the day before out of that airport. Saturday, the day before that, we were... I want to say it was like six blocks, at most, six blocks from where the bombs went off. Just walking around like Boston. So we got six blocks away. We flew out on that Sunday. The marathon was on the Monday. And on that Monday, I had timed it. Uh, that I, w I was in college at that time. I was here in Austin going to community college. I think I was like in a... I feel like I was in a Spanish class, I think. I can't remember. And I had my laptop in front of me connected to the, the school's Wi-Fi. And before the class started, uh, my mom called me. She's like, I just wanted to make sure you were back from Boston and everything's okay. I was like, yeah, I'm sitting in class. I'm a, uh, <clears throat> class is about to start. Like, why? What? What's up? What? What's with the concern? She's like, you haven't seen the news? I'm like, no. She's like, look up the news. And so I like usatoday.com. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, this is messed up. So yeah, like two days before I was like six blocks away. That is 
like six blocks is quite a huge amount of distance, but that is in Boston and I live in Austin, Texas. The from my perspective, again in my life, the closest I ever got to something like that before was uh, when I was in the military, I was stationed in Oklahoma City. So I've been to the Oklahoma City Memorial for the bombing that happened there. I mean, granted, that was like six years later. So the memorial and everything was created, and I wasn't anywhere near it while the bombing was going off. But that was my personal connection to anything like that happening. I've never been to New York, so I've never been to like Ground Zero or anything. Uh, although I was in the military during 9-11, and that was interesting. Uh, this was the closest I feel like I've ever had to something like that. And it's, while I understand, like, I was nowhere near it, it's still weird for me. And, yeah, just, uh, that, the one particular time I happened to go to Boston just so happened to be the weekend before fucking weird uh i will say though on a positive note because i want to make this more positive uh if you're ever in boston during the boston marathon weekend uh samuel adams which is the brewery is based in boston uh first of all go visit the brewery because it's fantastic they had it shut down when i went uh, so all we did was just go to the tasting room, which no complaint there. All, it means all I'm doing is just drinking beer. And I like their beer to begin with, so yeah, no big deal. Uh, they typically do a very special brew for the Boston Marathon weekend. And there's a select number of uh, bars and pubs along the... Mar I guess, uh, Garth, correct me if I'm wrong... I believe it's done through the marathon route. Not just random bars and pubs, but they have to be aligned with the marathon route for them to carry that special brew. The one that I had during that weekend, uh, which was referred to as the uh, Sam Adams 26.2, was fantastic. We went through, me and my girlfriend at the time, we visited a bunch of pubs that carried it. And so now it became like a, it inadvertently became a pub crawl. Oh, your cousin had a close call. He was, can, he canceled his flight leaving out of Boston. It was one of the night. Fuck. That's insane. Yeah, I think like all the flights... All the flights for 9-11 all came out of Logan. Uh, so the idea was the fact that they were all filled with fuel, so therefore they would provide a bigger boom whenever they collided with what they were colliding with. Of course, we know of the, the planes that hit the World Trade Center. Um, there was the one that hit the Pentagon, and then the one that touched down in Pennsylvania, which I believe was United 93, which was the uh, Paul Greengrass movie. Uh, that one was actually headed for the White House. At the time, this is going to be fun, uh, I guess, depending on your definition of fun. At the time, no one officially knew where that was headed. Those of us in the military, and here's the, I might be talking out my ass, it's perfectly okay. Those of us in the military at the time were told that it was actually uh, planned for that plane to hit the White House. So that one was headed for Washington, D.C. Which is insane given if you've ever been to Washington, D.C. where the White House is located, it's actually located like deep within the city. It would be really hard to navigate an airplane straight for the White House with all the other buildings around. And I know like movies, movies have shown the White House as being like out in the open, this big, huge field and stuff. And it has that, but it is deep within downtown Washington DC and like it, it would be hard for an airplane to actually hit that even if it was heading for the capital which the capital is probably a good uh, I don't know 
good six, seven blocks away from the White House. I mean, it, it, it's quite a distance, but you could walk it. I think the Capitol is a much bigger target. Great, now I got the FBI watching this this stream. So, hey, thanks, FBI. Make sure you click like and subscribe. I don't know why, but... So, r real quick, 9-11, I was, I was in the military. I was in the Air Force. So, we weren't, like, really combat... My my specific job was combat communications. We were a satellite communications department. So we would set up if, for example, if we were to go to war, my unit, flight, whatever you want to call it, would have been one that would have deployed to set up communications for the military that's there on the front line. So we would have gone, we would have set up this communications van, set up these uh, satellite dishes that communicates with the satellite up in space to provide that communications frequency for like the generals and people that are there on the front line that need to have that communication. That was my job. Because it was a... <laughs> Robert right now sound like this old W... Cuck, W K U K sketch. Okay, I will have to watch that later. But um, because it was a combat communications, we still had to have some kind of training. Even though, like going into it, we were told that we were going to be far beyond enemy lines. Like if the if we were supposedly attacked. It would take quite a few people to get through to where we were stationed at, where we were set up at. It would be hard, but the fact that we were the communications hub made us a target. So because of that, we had to be trained on combat. I have been trained at the time. <laughs> I don't know how well that works now. Uh, it's been over 20 years, roughly. At the time, I was trained on the M16 rifle. I was in an M16 training class when 9-11 went on. So we were learning like how the rifle works and how to disassemble it and reassemble it. And which, that was a part of our basic training anyway. So I had, I had already handled an M16 at that point and fired it and did like target practice and whatnot. Um, but I was in a, uh, or like kind of like a refresher course. I was in a training course for it. Uh, we went on our first break that morning and there was a civilian contractor. There's just a civilian who wasn't military, but he worked for the military in this job, whatever his job was. I can't remember. He was sitting out in the smoking area. I was a cigarette smoker at the time. Uh, so we went out there and he was out there with a, like a little portable radio going, man, did y'all hear about this? A plane hit the world trade center. And we're like, well, shit, I guess someone's navigation was off. Well, that sucks. We had our cigarettes, those of us who were out there and we went back in, uh, went back in the class and the people, people in the classroom were already talking about it. Cause apparently a lot of everyone heard it during the break, went back in the class Class continued like like normal. Uh, we got word that a plane hit the second World Trade Tower. So they sent us on break again. Just because at this point we're like, yeah, this isn't a navigation error. We're actually under attack. Obviously. We went on a break again, came back, and they had a TV in the classroom. And those of y'all, depending on your age, when there was a TV in the classroom, that usually was awesome. It wasn't awesome at this point. It had it. We had it turned on to the news that was showing it. It was showing the first World Trade Center on fire with smoke coming out, and then it replayed footage. I, I might be wrong on this because I can't remember the timeline exactly. But I think it showed the footage of the first building collapsing. I can't remember. The, I If I remember correctly, I want to say the second building was... The second tower was hit. 
before the first tower collapsed. So, we saw footage of a tower collapsing. Um, but then, like, we were sitting there watching it. They turned it off. We continued class like normal. And then shortly after that, someone came running into the classroom and said, Hey, another plane just hit the Pentagon. Class is canceled. Everyone is to go back to their normal office. Which, this is all on the same base, keep in mind. So all I had to do was just go, like, a block and a half back to where my regular office was, where I normally report to for work. And I went back there. Everybody there was all in the break room watching C-SPAN. We spent the entire day in the break room watching C-SPAN. Um, and watching all the news, the footage, everything about this. Uh, I, I remember, again, this was like the first time I had a cell phone. I was like, what, 19 at the time? <laughs> Quite a juxtaposition, because I'm 41 as of today. So, 19 at the time when this happened. Shit, I feel old. Um, sorry, Garth. <laughs> um, and my mom called me later on that afternoon. And she knows I'm, a, I'm, I'm in Oklahoma City. She calls me up, she's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm in Oklahoma City. No one's ever attacking Oklahoma City. Never mind. Shit. <laughs> so, yeah, I told her, I was like, yeah, we're just, we're severely on high alert. Um, the, I, I don't know how many people might be familiar with, like, base security levels, but there was... Alpha security, which is common. The alpha is the normal day to day, no problem whatsoever. Delta, when you get up to Delta, so Alpha, Beta, Charlie, Delta. When you get up to Delta, nobody is allowed on base or off base. You are stuck where you're at. If you're on base, you stay on base. If you're not on base, you stay off base. We went from Alpha. To Delta within probably about 15 20 minutes. The second the Pentagon was hit, the all every military installation went to Delta. So, yeah, that was insane. But yeah, that's my that's my 9 11 story. Even though I wasn't in New York, I was in the military at the time, and it's it's still wild how that happened. And then, of course, uh, the being in Boston the weekend before the Boston Marathon bombing. Just, ugh, that's crazy. Yeah, Jeremy, uh, like, here's the, again, I was in the military, I was out of high school. I have no idea, I have no recollection of how anyone else handled that. So I'm always intrigued hearing people, especially on 9-11, hearing people's stories of how 9-11 happened with them, how they found out what they went through and stuff. Yeah, it's, it, it's wild and crazy, but... Anyways... Let's bring this on a positive note. I'm 41, and I still feel okay. I don't feel any different than I did yesterday, so I'm still good to go. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that I have people here that come and watch as I'm starting this YouTube channel again. I did, like, uh, blo uh, vlogs and stuff on this channel. I can't... I, th I feel like I, uh, like I did remove those for right now. I may bring them back eventually. Um, I would like to vlog again. The thing with vlogging is unless you're Casey Neistat who could pump out a vlog video real quick, uh, it's, it's very hard to crank those out. I think there's only one video out of all those vlogs I did 
there's only one that I was able to film, edit, and kick out to YouTube within one day. And it was it was a video that I did where uh, it was basically a tour a, a small tour of Austin. I went to South Austin to there's a costume makeup store off of uh, Riverside in South in well Central Austin actually. Uh, I went there to pick up a, a couple of makeup for a review I was going to do for 2018's Suspiria. Which is a remake of the 19... Uh, was, it, was it 1977, I believe? The original Suspiria. Uh, I love Suspiria. It's a great horror movie. Classic horror movie. Uh, it's not overly gory, except for one scene at the very beginning. And if you can make it past that, you're fine for the rest, for the rest of the movie. But kind of like going back to what I was saying, how I like things like overly color saturated, Suspiria is prime example of that. I love Suspiria. I got my brother to watch The Thing. The next thing I'm going to do is try to figure out how to get him to watch Suspiria. Although that probably won't be a thing. That's not necessarily a horror movie that someone who's not a horror fan needs to watch. But if you are a horror fan, I highly recommend Suspiria. The original uh, Dario Argento Suspiria. Uh, the 2018 one that was uh, directed by uh, was it, uh, Luca Guadagnino. It was good. I, I appreciated it. It was way different than the original. <laughs> but <laughs> Chris is like, nope. Um. Uh, eventually, uh, here's the thing, uh, uh, and at this point, I'm talking just to Chris. Eventually, there may be a need for you to watch it. As someone who wants to talk about movies on YouTube, I do understand in a very specific reason why you should watch that movie, and you, I feel like you'd be okay with it. But yeah, it, it it's very. I don't know how you describe these kinds of movies. It's a movie where. Yeah, if he's not watching a Clockwork Orange, he's not watching Suspiria. Um, well, so he didn't watch Clockwork Orange because he wasn't feeling well at the time. The day that he that he was going to watch Clockwork Orange was the day that he like shut himself off to the world. He wasn't feeling well. I didn't see him at all that entire day. That's how bad it was. There's not a day that goes by that I don't see my brother. He lives with me in this apartment. Um yeah, Nope wasn't bad. He could he he easily watched Nope. Uh, Chris is going to be open to almost anything Jordan Peele does. Because Jordan Peele is doing phenomenal work so far. I wasn't a big fan of Nope. Because I didn't it didn't fall in line with what I had expected out of Jordan Peele. I need to watch Nope again. And I'm pretty sure my opinion is going to change. Same with uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, but I feel like Chris could probably take in Suspiria. The 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 question though is: Is there a reason for him to watch Suspiria? Not as of yet. We're not doing like Italian Giallo movie marquee, and even so, he wouldn't be a part of that anyway. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 a good movie, but it's not. It doesn't go through the regular narrative that you think that most people typically think of movies going through so it is pretty abstract with how it tells its story it's a good movie it's very good it took me a couple of watches to really appreciate it but yeah it's 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 gorgeous it is a gorgeous movie the use of colors in that movie is prime for like giallo movies at that time but yeah anyways um this has been going on for two and a half hours this is my longest stream so far out of the three i got five viewers i know one is me and one is my brother so i appreciate the other three of y'all that are here for this um 
I think I'm going to go ahead and end this though because I do need to eat some food real quick before I go to bed and have to get up tomorrow for work. So I'm going to go ahead and end this. Thank you, all of you who have been watching. Even if you're not watching right now and you were here earlier, I appreciate you being here. Already one person dropped off already. He's in, in the stream. I'm out. It's going to be a bunch of plugs. Uh, it is going to be a bunch of plugs. You're absolutely right. <laughs> but I appreciate you being here nonetheless. Um, make sure you like and comment on this video if you're watching. Uh, comment on this video if you're watching it as a replay later. Although two and a half hours. Hey, if you're watching all of this for two and a half hours on a replay, good on you. <laughs> I know how YouTube works and that's not likely to happen. But I appreciate your view nonetheless so i'm going to end this make sure you follow me at robert adams mlp on twitter instagram and letterbox where i'm giving my opinions if i do a review for a movie on there typically not i'll usually do a review on like twitter or on cinefanatics but follow me on that also just because you like me and that's a good way to follow me and boost up the social media numbers. Anyways, so thank you for watching tonight. I appreciate everyone who's been, who's been here. Uh, some of y'all I haven't met in person and I would love to meet y'all in person. Garth, Jeremy, Lego, y'all are all awesome. I absolutely love y'all being here. Uh, who else was here? I want to shout out like everyone else. I know Vernon was here earlier. Absolutely appreciate Vernon's support. Chris, I don't know who this Chris Adams person is though. So anyways, thank y'all all for being here. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, I like having people here to help celebrate a birthday with me. So I'm just not all by myself. So thank y'all for being here. Um, y'all let me know if there's anything else like Nintendo wise you want me to do. If you want me to set up the Wii, I, I guess I'll spend the next couple of days digging through my closet trying to find that Wii U. <laughs> Chris, pass on meeting you in person. You know what? Go fuck yourself also. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> thank y'all for being here. Uh, I will see y'all. What is today? Saturday? Technically Sunday now. Uh, if you are a part of the Patreon for Cine Fanatics, make sure you're at that $5 tier. I want to see people show up for this watch along. We're doing the usual suspects on Monday and this is a phenomenal movie, especially if you haven't seen it and you don't know anything about it, please join us on that watch along. It's going to be good. I absolutely promise you nothing I need to do. The movie is going to do it itself. So be here for that otherwise i will see everyone else on the tagline on wednesday i don't know when i'm gonna do the stream again i may do it before wednesday who knows it's whenever i feel like like you know what i want to i want to do a stream i want to talk to people i want to hang out so that will be at that time so make sure you follow me and yeah i will go ahead and use that actual screen that says the stream is ending thank y'all for being here I appreciate y'all. Everyone have a good night.